Welcome to our first ever Dynasty on College Football 25. We selected Arizona State University. If you follow this channel in the Pittsburgh Pirates franchise, you know I'm from Arizona. We also selected Motivator. I flicked over those for quite a bit, and that's what we landed on. We're going to stay with the ASU spread offense. They're 3 3 5 defense as well. You can see the rest that we're setting up here. We're from Arizona State. Our pipeline is Arizona. And that's the face we're going with. And Arizona State is very much a disappointing college, in my opinion. We have a couple, well, three seasons in the last 20 with 10 or more wins, and it's actually 10 wins in those. We have one with nine, one with eight. This is a college that, in my opinion, in Tempe, Arizona, they should be able to recruit a lot better than they have in the past, put, a, put together a lot better team than they ever have, and that's what we're hired to do. Looking at the needs, it's pretty much everywhere. We need quarterback, halfbacks, wide receivers, offensive line. We've got 23 seniors on this team, 14 of them on the offensive side. The defense isn't much better. We got a bunch of needs over there as well. So really this year, I'm just going to scout for the best players available that we can find on our board. Frederick Thorne, the only five-star recruit that we're going after. We're going to get some scouting done with him. He is from Mesa, Arizona. His position is cornerback and he's a bust. We're going to keep scouting him, though, because he is a five star recruit. And I believe from what I've read, that's only the development trait that that really matters on. So we'll keep him going in our pipeline. Love to get a five star recruit in our first year at ASU. We're going to definitely offer him a scholarship, a right tackle from Scottsdale, Arizona. We'll get him scouted up here. These statistics, you know, I'm not very familiar with yet, but we will get better over time here. I'm just trying to figure out what's good for the team and another bust here. Yeah, not sure about him. If we move on to Boyd here. We're going to get a 93 speed, 94 acceleration, 79 spectacular catch, agility 91. Looks like a pretty good three star recruit running or wide receiver. We're going to offer Boyd a scholarship as well. Then we have John Santana, a wide receiver, physical tendency from Yuma, Arizona. Looks like he is broken as well. Catch is 81, jumping 94, speed 89. That's not really bad. We'll keep him on the board. We'll see how he is. He's a four-star recruit. Ah, uh, yeah, let's offer him a scholarship as well. Moving on to Lawson here. He is a gem, four-star, wide receiver. Offer a scholarship there. We're just going to keep going through the rest of these guys and offer some scholarships. As we start narrowing it down to the ones that are really interested in the school, we'll get to know them a little bit better and their attributes. Just going to finish spending the rest of our 70, 750 points this week and move on to the next one, which is a bye week to start the season for us. And since we're a motivator, I'm going to start focusing on the wide receivers with our points. The next week of scouting has started. We have Frederick Thorne here on the top of our board. I've got things a little more organized when it comes to these prospects and the order of my interest. And we're going to start sending the house to all of these top ones. I believe we'll be able to get 12 of them in. So we'll set them up on that, spending 50 points on each of them. Looks like during regular weeks, we're going to have 600 hours to spend based on our coaching staff right now. We'll see about upgrading those throughout the years and see if we can get a little bit more time so that we can be a little more of a powerhouse and have a lot more time recruiting. I think that's pretty self-explanatory, but here you see us just sending the house to all these guys. I don't know if there's another strategy that works better. I have seen a lot of people doing this online early on in scouting, really focused on 12 players at a time here with our hours that we're allotted. That's the plan we're gonna go with, and we'll be able to quickly, before playing a game, advance a week and see how things are changing before we even play a single game. And no one's locked us out yet, but we have a lot of players narrowing it down to their top eight schools. I guess that's some progress we want to see. So Thorne, not a huge change up top there. Elmore, we're third. We didn't gain anything last week. We're going up against UCLA and USC. I just think this isn't a wise one for us to keep focused on and spending 50 hours a week on. I think we'll probably go ahead and take Elmore off of our board and just saving that money on somebody else or spending those hours on someone else that would be more likely to pull into the team. That's the plan. And then Lawson here, we're number one still looking good. Make, make a, oh, that name's going to get me. Fleming, we're still at fourth, but we're pretty close to those other three schools. I think we'll hold off one more week on him. Santana looking good. Logan here looking good so far. Ben looking good, number one still. Cribs were number one. Avant, number one. Angel were number one. And Boyd is somebody that we could add to send the house here. 
Let's see what his scouting looks like before we make that de that determination here on Bo um, Bond. Sorry, not Boyd. Bond. And looking at the scouting here, it, yeah, 93 speed. We'll definitely want to send the house for Bond. And with the first few weeks of recruiting out of the way, it is time to play our first game. We're at Sun Devil Stadium. We're at home facing off against Wyoming. And this should be interesting. This is the first time I'll be playing defense. I'll be using a kicker. All I've done so far in this game is play the road to glory and that series isn't going anywhere. I'm just taking my time on that. But learning how to play defense on a brand new game live for you guys will be entertaining, I hope. Wyoming does start the game with the ball. We got a first and 10 here. Running back in motion, snaps the ball. We're trying to get a little bit of pressure. Hey, we deflect that one. All right, got some defense going. Second and 10 here. They got a wide receiver in motion this time. Fake the handoff to him, but then give it to the halfback. Four looks like a nine yard gain. It's third and inches. Can we get off the field here on the first drive? Third and inches. Hand off to the running back. Good stop there, but he does get the first down. First and 10 for Wyoming. Looks like they got two wide receivers to the left, one to the right, number four in the backfield. Wide receiver in motion, fake the jet pass, and we get our first sack of the game. That makes it second and 17. And they open up this play in the shotgun. Number four been the backfield still, two wide receivers to the left, one to the right. It fakes the handoff. Get a little bit of pressure there, but across the middle, number 83 with a big gain. It's first down for Wyoming. On first and 10 here, we're going to try to blitz with our linebacker, trying to find a lane here. We get a late jump on that, but we do get some pressure. Second and 10. And on second down, we see Wyoming under the center for the first time here. Hands it off. Looks like they're going to get a big gain again. We got to figure out how to play defense. First and 10, five minutes and 40 seconds to go in the first quarter. Hand off to the running back and then to the wide receiver. Uh, we're not falling for that trick at all. Second and 15. And on second down, they're in shotgun again. Looks like we have a, ooh, I don't know where the wide receivers were. I couldn't tell, but a big gain by the running back. I'm struggling to switch players at this point and figure out how to get the closest one and yeah, we'll figure it out. First and 10 here at the 18 yard line. They're in the red zone for the first time. Hand it off to the, we'll throw the short pass technically for four yards. It's second and six. And we got to get a stop here somehow. I don't know where it's going to come, but we got to figure out how to play defense because this is starting out bad. And there we go. Quarterback makes a mistake. Number 19 here, Abney, I believe you say it. Abney the second. He's going to outrun number 21. We're going to start our first drive as a defense with six points with a pick six. 83 yard pick six. Unbelievable start to the game. Playing this live, I wasn't sure we we're gonna be able to pull anything off to stop them. Luckily it was a terrible decision by their quarterback and we benefited from it. Now seven to nothing here. First and 10 for Wyoming on their next drive. See how they bounce back. We're going to get into the backfield here. Two defenders stop them for a loss of two yards. It is second and 12 now. Still in the first quarter. I think after playing this game, I am going to drop it down to five minutes. Seven minutes seems to be a little too long for me. There's a catch to the tight end. Third and nine at this point. See if we can get off the field and take control of this game early on. Our stadium is going insane. Oh, is he going to... Nice breakup of the pass there. We take over first and 10 at the 13 yard line, our own 13, tight end in motion. Our first play on offense, we're gonna hand it off. And Scadaboo is only able to get one yard on his first run. That makes it second and nine. We got three wide receivers to the right, one to the left here. Looking for the open man, scrambling a little bit. We're gonna run, might as well. Now, I do have to admit, I'm not the biggest college football fan. This McDougald quarterback, I couldn't find anything about him online. I don't think he actually attends ASU. I'll do another check here after doing the voiceover, but I was confused. Anybody let me know. I'm sure there's a ton of college football fans out there that might see this. I love college football, but I've been kind of out of the loop, I would say, for like the last 10 years. But we're at third and one now with three minutes and 31 seconds to go. We hand off to Scadaboo again for the first down. And looking at this play here, we're going to fake the wide receiver screen and see if we can get a receiver downfield by plenty of time. And oh my, he is wide open. Breaks a tackle. 
Touchdown, ASU. And when we're gonna miss the extra point here. And yeah, I got get, I get used to the kicking meter throughout this game, but it, it'll work out fine. We have a second and seven for Wyoming on the next drive here. 13 nothing, a chance to really blow them away. And it's third and seven now, unable to convert on second down. They do have an opportunity here, but with the lead, we're keeping the crowd in the game. I'm sure they're having a hard time, but there's a nice missed tackle by us, number nine. This is going to break away because I kept selecting a player and running away instead of it switching to the closest one. At least that's what I saw happen there. But either way, it's 7 to 13. McDougal's going to try to get out of the pocket there and throws under pressure. Number two with the interception. We're going to tackle him at the 20 yard line. Nick at the 19 yard, 19th yard line. Wyoming now has the ball down by six. First and 10 from our 19 yard line. Deep pass to the end zone. Touchdown. Wyoming is back in this game and they have the lead. On the next drive, we do start giving it to Scataboo a little bit more. Try to really get him involved in the game. He's probably our best player on offense. See a little halfback toss there. Or screen, excuse me, for the first down. First and 10 now. We have a minute 36 to go in the first quarter. We'll send our tight end in motion here. And we will hand the ball off. We fake it this time. Looking for someone down the field. But the throw's just short. Second and 10. And shotgun this time with the spread there with the slant. Scataboo gets a catch, but only one yard. On third and nine, we have plenty of time in the pocket here, but I just made a poor decision. So we punt it away. Wyoming now has the ball with the lead here. A minute to go in the first quarter. That handoff goes for a negative one yard. A second and 11. Make that third and 16. Defense is starting to step it up here. Let's see if we can get another stop. And look at that wide open to the quarterback with the sack. Number 24 makes it fourth and 24. 25 seconds to go in the first quarter. We take the ball back and we are at our 48 yard line. Scataboo with the carry gets us to the 50. Make that second and nine. 15 seconds to go. This should be the last play of the first quarter. Plenty of time in the pocket here. Does not check down to his running back. Instead, the pass is deflected. Make that third and nine. And we have one more play in the third quarter, but we do not get the ball away in time. So Wyoming takes over to start the second quarter. First and 10. Hand off to number four here. And our defense is just letting them get some chunk plays. We've got to get a stop here. Got to get the ball back. First and 10. Another handoff. Another decent gain, more missed tackles. This defense has a lot of work. I got a lot of work to do to get better. It's gonna be a process. Second and two, get a nice stop there. The loss of three yards makes it third and five on the next play. 6.23 to go in the quarter. Get some pressure on the quarterback. He's just gonna throw it away and turn the ball back over to ASU. And it's third and 10 on our next drive and we have to escape the pockets. We see a guy downfield. And he catches it. Number three with a great catch there. We almost missed him. Almost missed him. First and goal now. Opportunity to get back on the lead. We hand it to Scataboo. He gets us to the two-yard line with a five-yard gain. Second and goal. Going to call a little audible here. We're going to go with the run play instead. Hand it to Scataboo. Breaks a tackle. Touchdown. Arizona State. We go for the two-point conversion here. And this is probably my best pass of the game. Put it where only our receiver can catch it. It's 21-14. Still in the second quarter. We got three and a half minutes to go. ASU up by a touchdown here, but Wyoming is on the drive. And number 18 tipped the ball, but 21 still catches it and is just wide open for the touchdown after that. Tie ball game. Two minutes to go. We fail on our third down conversion opportunity last time, and Wyoming has the ball back. Nice pass there to their tight end for nine yards second and one here with a minute 48 to go in the half we blitz we bring the house but they get the screen off in time for a big gain by number four more missed tackles down to the seven yard line it's first and goal tie ball game but wyoming's about to strike here our defender there got a hand on it the cornerback makes it second and goal and trying to get more pressure here he runs out of bounds it's third and goal Will they get seven here or have to settle for a field goal? And on the slant, that makes it 28 to 21. Third and six here with 30 seconds to go. We see a guy wide open down here, but he drops it. Oh, the drop passes are going to kill us. 11 seconds on the clock. Wyoming has a chance to come down and score. We're going to try to stop him and 
keep the game close going into the half. It's 28-21 right now, six seconds to go on second and 10. Giving up a big play here would be detrimental to this game. Deep pass, we knock it down. Still two seconds on the clock. It is third and 10. I have a feeling they're going to go for the end zone on this, and we've got to knock this down and not give up a Hail Mary touchdown from the 47-yard line. We don't get any pressure. Deep pass here. We're going to go ahead and intercept it. Carr with the interception, number 32 here. He's going to try to take it out. Cuts back to the center of the field. Finds a lane to the left. And now it's just a race with him and number four. Can he get there? It's getting a little bit close to the 20, the 15. He jukes him at the 10. Pick six. A second pick six for ASU in this game. Ties it up at half. It is now 28 to 28. What a play. What a momentum taking play. Sparky loves it. Sun Devil Stadium loves it. This game's tied at halftime. Should have just taken a knee and been happy with the seven-point lead, but Wyoming was trying to strike here, and ASU just clutch. Great blocks by the, the defense here. You can see this cutback was key. Gets a couple yards up and sees the lane open wide open there. Completely wide open to the left, and it was just a race. Number four couldn't make the tackle. Great juke move by Carr to get in the end zone and save this game potentially. We move to the third quarter, and Scadaboo is going to be, you know, our strategic move here is going to be getting him the ball as much as possible. There's a big gain on first down. The next play, we give it back to him, and he gets a good chunk here. Gets it to second and four. Starting to move the ball a little bit better, feeling a little more comfortable in the offense. We get a nice pass there to number nine. I'll learn the names eventually, guys, but we're going to go by the numbers here. Some of these names are really confusing. They get to us on that first down, so it's second and ten now. Going to do another pass play here. Trying to stay in the pocket a little bit more. It seems to, to help out from the pocket collapsing when you drop back a little too far now. Third and 10. Opportunity to convert here. Just a terrible decision. I did not see 31 hiding there. And that's our pick six to hand the momentum right back to Wyoming. Jump later into the third quarter here on a first and 10. See us staying in the pocket. A deep pass here. Try to catch it. A user catch there, but number three drops it. Would have been a beautiful touchdown. Here we decide to use the scramble and fumble. I've noticed this being a trend in the game. Lots of fumbles when the quarterbacks scramble. At least the quarterbacks I've been using. But we move forward to third and 10 for Wyoming. See if they can convert here or if ASU can get a stop. And that should have been a great catch, but the dive is unsuccessful. We now have a third and eight with 3.53 to go, 3.35 to go in the third quarter and a drop pass there. We'll have to give it back to them. Moving later into the fourth quarter now, six minutes and 20 seconds to go. We have a first and 10, trying to scramble a little bit here, but we get sacked for a nine-yard loss. And on the next play, we find Smith for... A nice 11-yard gain. That makes it third and eight with 5.52 to go. McDougal is going to scramble here. He gets away from the 93 pursuiter there for a good gain. Makes it fourth and two. He takes it into his own hands and calls for no huddle here. Hurry up play. Wants to not let the coach determine that we're going to punt, and the coach doesn't call a timeout. So we do get the playoff here, fourth and two. Nice catch there by number one for the first down. Keep this drive alive. Five minutes and 20 seconds to go. Still first and 10 now. We're at the 42-yard line, and McDougal with a huge lane to the left. One defender to beat. He jukes him out, breaks those tackles. Well, kind of, and he falls into the end zone. 35 to 35 in the fourth quarter. Now we move to a third and 10 for Wyoming. Four minutes and 25 seconds to go. Can we get some pressure on them? Doesn't look like it, but they do not get the first down. They'll have to punt it back to us. And on third and five, we have an opportunity to convert here and keep the drive alive. McDougal with the scramble, and he slides this time. First and 10 on the 39-yard line. Hand off to Scadaboo here for a gain of two yards to the 37-yard line. Second and eight, steps up in the pocket and gets a first down and holds on to the ball. It's now first and 10 with 2.35 to go in the game. We do decide to run some of the clock down here, trying to just get down to potentially a touchdown or a field goal to win the game. Trying not to give the ball back to Wyoming. There's another handoff to Scadaboo for another first down. And there's an injury timeout for Wyoming. I don't know why that doesn't take one of their timeouts away with less than two minutes in the game. It seems like cheating to me. 
but it's now second and eight. So we got the clock running here. Wyoming has not used a timeout yet. And it's second and eight, like I said, gains one yard. They do use a timeout there. Now it's third and seven. Another handoff here, just playing it safe. We did not want to turn the ball over, so we will settle for a field goal with a minute nine to go in the game. 38 to 35, ASU. A minute three to go. Wyoming has the ball on the 18 yard line. They got a ways to go to get into field goal range. And this first pass gets them nine yards. Second and one. Not looking too great for us. They do sp spike the ball here to stop the clock. Third and one. That means we got two stops we've got to make here to win the game. But on third and one, they do pick up the first down. Number 84 with a clutch catch there. They're at the 31 yard line now. First and 10. Three point ball game. Make it second and 10 after the clock stoppage there. 41 seconds to go. Screen is shaking a little bit because of the stands. The stadium is intense. Incomplete pass. It is third and 10. This is getting intense, guys. Are we going to pull this off? Third down here. He scrambles away, but the receiver runs out of bounds. It's fourth and seven. He could have turned the corner there and gained more yards, but he did not. And we just don't get any pressure on fourth down. Big play by 84 again. Wow. They're to the 46-yard line now. First and 10, 27 seconds to go. Again, we almost get the pressure, but another great diving catch. 22 seconds to go. He throws it away. Now it's second and 10 with 20 seconds, and they decide to kick the field goal to tie the game and send it to overtime. And we run into the kicker, so it's good still. Taking a look at the overtime rules, you can pause it and take a look at that if you want, but if we go to a second overtime, we will have to try two-point conversions instead of extra points. On first and 10, McDougal tries to scramble and gets one yard. It's second and nine. Another pass play here, fake handoff, and automatically or instantly decides to scramble first down. The strategy here was to call those pass plays and run anyways. I wanted to really make sure we didn't turn the ball over, so we were, we were running with the ball. We go into the Wildcat here. Scadaboo fakes the handoff, and it's wide open for the touchdown. ASU, with the extra point here, goes up by seven in overtime, 45 to 38. First and 10 for Wyoming. Four stops here will end the game. Let's see how the defense holds up under pressure. On the first play, we get some pressure on the quarterback and a sack. That is a six yard loss, second and 16. And on second and 16, they go four wide and the quarterback in the shotgun. And we get pressure again. He just, the pocket collapsed on him. It's third and 28 now. Two plays away from clinching this game. Let's see what happens on this third and 28 play. They do have a running back in the backfield on this one. Maybe for, I thought it was gonna be for some extra blocking. It did not. It takes a while to get pressure, but he throws it out of bounds. Fourth and 28, Wyoming's last opportunity to tie the game in overtime. Good catch to their go-to guy there, number 84, but it is short, and Arizona State wins their first game of the season in overtime, 38-45 to 45 against Wyoming. Scadaboo with a player of the game, 144 yards on the ground, 28 attempts, two touchdowns. That does not include his receiving yards. And on the motivator tree, we decide to add a couple more tiers to the wide receiver, the receiving game, spending 10 points there. We also decide to spend the other 10 points on the, what is it called here, passing game. So we get the play it forward and hot hand for the quarterbacks. I do want to keep track of the top 25 as we go through these seasons. We can see here, nothing really surprising yet. Our rivals, Arizona, are number 16 at this point. They are 1-0. We, don't, we do not show up on the top 25. Don't expect that for a couple weeks, if not this season at all. Checking the extra votes now. We didn't, we didn't receive any votes for the top 25. So jumping back into recruiting, Thorne, we're still number one. It's going to keep an eye on all these and see if there's any points that we want to adjust here. Lawson, we're still looking good. Mapanga, Mapanga, we're looking good. Epperson, still looking solid there. Looks like we're going to have a handful of good guys coming into this first class. We're number two with Fleming behind USC. Kind of taking a peek over here. Should we pull out of this one? He's at 92 speed. I think we're going to stay in that for a little bit longer. Santana, ASU, or U of A is the other school pursuing him. I think we'll stay there. And I think just going to stay pat on all of these decisions right now. We're, we're leading a lot of these 
recruiting battles and I'm hoping to have a pretty decent first class. I haven't done any practicing in sim of this or another franchise. This is the first time seeing this system for myself. Here's someone we should probably walk away from. We'll take him off the board. And these guys that we're not sending the house on, we're going to see other teams really pass us. So I'm hoping to get a couple people locked in, accept some offers so we can spend those hours on other players here soon because we got to get a decent amount of people in on this class. And I'm hoping we don't have to rely on the transfer portal too much. But that'll do it for this game or this episode. We'll take on Mississippi State next time. I'm Socks Way Up. Thanks for hanging out. I'll catch you on the next episode.